Hi, Lee Ellis here with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, this is July, and you know what July means, July the 4th, and that's a big holiday. We're all excited about it for a lot of reasons. You know, some good barbecue and lots of family get-togethers and parades, but the thing that really makes it special is our freedom. This is a time to celebrate our freedom. You know, our country is, we're so fortunate to be part of this country to experience the freedom, personal freedoms, property freedoms, a lot of things that we don't even think about. When you travel to other countries, their situations are quite different. Now, we're not perfect, and I love other countries, but this country does have a real special edge, and that's why everybody wants to come here, because it is so good. But today, I want you to focus also on your individual freedom, the freedom to be who you really can be and who you really are. And not to be caught up in trying to be something that you're not, but to actually have self-awareness and know who you are, to know your strengths, to know your struggles, and to be able to adapt in different situations to be more effective. That is so powerful and it brings so much freedom that you can believe in yourself. Now the elephant in the room is so many of us are afraid that we're not perfect and others will see they're not perfect and then we'll lose our credibility. Well, that's just a big fat lie because none of us are perfect. We all have a lot of problems that we have to work through in life. And I'm still on my journey. So be free to allow yourself to be imperfect and then step in and learn about yourself. Well, today we're very fortunate to have Cindy Fowler from here in Atlanta, Georgia. She's a business owner, a leadership consultant, trainer, coach, and oh gosh, goodness, does she know about self-awareness. So Cindy will be sharing that in, in the video in just a second. Before we go there, though, I want to remind you that we do a blog every month and it will be on freedom and self-awareness, the same subject, and I'll share three tips on how to grow in self-awareness and gain that freedom. And finally, remember we have a new platform for our blogs. It's a collaborative platform, so please just click and share. Share, you can type it in, you can audio tape it in, you can video it in. We just want to hear what you think. Your opinion matters. And we have freedom of speech here, so be sure and share. We'd love to hear it. So until next month, I hope you'll be thinking about freedom. I'm putting my hat on. You notice the flag and the word freedom. I'm getting ready to celebrate. This was a gift from Kevin, one of my teammates. And uh, I'm excited about freedom. I'm going to think about it every day for a couple of weeks now and be thankful for who we are, where we live, and for the freedom just to be myself. I hope you'll do that too. She does a lot of leadership consulting and coaching. She works a lot with CEOs and their teams. So that's very important because it relates to exactly what we're talking about is understanding yourself and understanding your people and being able to manage yourself and others appropriately based on who we are because we're all different. So this morning I thought it'd be good to hear your thoughts on this. And is this an issue that you've seen in the workplace? It's one that we see a lot, but what is your experience in working with senior leaders especially? Are they self-aware? Do they realize what's going on here? What's been your experience, Cindy? Well, I think you work with a lot of different companies and you find out that there are a lot of varying degrees of whether they're self-aware or not. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that shows the companies that are successful and the companies that aren't. And so I'm a big advocate of being self-aware about your leadership styles. And a lot of people haven't even heard about that, but they don't understand why they're not connecting with their people or they don't understand why they're not getting the results that they want to get. And a lot of times it's because they don't know the difference between leadership styles. So learning those styles and learning um, what they're good at and what they need to develop at is really, really important for the success as a leader as well as the bottom line of their company. So we call it results and relationship. And those are the two big dividers. Is that kind of what you see also? Absolutely. Because yeah, I think we're built one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we're born, we're kind of built one way. Right. Um, but as a leader or as somebody who wants to be a leader one day, I think it's really important that you develop that other side. I like to call it kind of the right hand and the left hand. So the thing that you've been given, maybe you've been given, um, for instance, I'm a results-oriented leader. So I was kind of born to think about results first and maybe relationships second. Um, but that doesn't mean that it is a license for me just to be relationship oriented because we all know that you can't do that. You have to have both to be a great leader. Mm -hmm. um, and so my right hand is more my um, more results orientation. And so those kind of decisions come very easy for me. 
but I have to really exercise my left hand in my relationship orientation because it takes both of those to be an effective leader. But you have to focus on the thing that you're not good at and get better at it. Yeah, I noticed in the NBA Finals last night that the really great pros, they shoot with both hands under the basket. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Great leaders learn to do both results and relationships. Absolutely. And it's really hard to learn the thing that you're not good at. Yeah. Um, and so some leaders, especially some owners of companies, think, oh, well, I'm only good at one thing. And because I'm in charge, that's a license for me just to be bad at the other thing. Mm -hmm. And those leaders don't last very long. And they're not as effective as the ones that have figured the other way out yeah. to learn the other piece. Great. Those are great insights. Thank you. So tell us a little bit more about your work in innovative outsourcing. Yeah, so about 25 years ago, I was in corporate America and decided that they, um, I was having my first child and I decided to stay home. And it was odd that there was no company that was focusing on people that had 10 or 15 years of experience in the workplace and wanted to stay home and maybe work part time. So I decided I was gonna create an option. So. 25 years ago, I created a company called Innovative Outsourcing, where we focus really on how do we create work-life balance for people, whether they're moms or dads or people taking care of sick relatives. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are really good at what they do, but they really don't want to work or can't work 40 hours a week. They want to be home in the school, bus comes home. So there are lawyers and bookkeepers and controllers and HR people, and they want to keep doing what they did, but they want to do it less than 40 hours a week. So um, we kind of match those people with small businesses and medium-sized businesses businesses that may need a controller, but they know and may need one 20 hours a week. So mm -hmm. I kind of, that's kind of been my mission. We do full-time placements also because those people that took part-time jobs with us, then their kids moved and went to college and now they want to work full-time again. And it's great because when, um, if they have stayed in the game, even on a part-time job um, for years during while their kids are growing up, then when they need a full-time job again, they don't have a resume with holes in it. So um, we just feel like it's an underserved piece of the population that we get to, we get to help and hopefully help those families achieve some work-life balance.